When I first heard about the project, I was actually really excited because um, before I kind of, I kind of felt limited in architecture because you have to make something that's buildable. But with this project, it was like you could kind of just go wild because some of his actual initial drawings don't make sense and are not buildable. So I was like, okay, I could bring that like exponentially. I can make whatever I want. It doesn't have to make sense. You know, it could just look cool and uh, and be interesting and appealing to the eye. The process is really just uh, identifying what's similar, what in your life identified a relationship with the work you're presented. So in this project, we're supposed to take uh, something that has already been done and we're supposed to expand it, right? I was kind of like, how am I going to pull this off? How am I going to make it look like I know what I'm doing most of the time? And how am I, especially how am I going to do it in a week and a half? Want to start? You start. No, you start. Um. <laughs> okay, so I, instead of, so everybody in the class zoomed out of the picture, and instead I, I zoomed in and detailed what was inside the, the drawing. I think it's a similar challenge because you, in both cases, you just, you create more of, of the, what the picture is, but using like patterns. Exactly, so. like you can use the other drawings to inspire yourself. I just took mine and then I look at the other other 12 and try to think of good elements that could fit in my drawing. I had a different vision of it. I was I kind of saw all the templates as pieces in a puzzle and how like they all fit together. So that's kind of my approach to it was taking two templates and putting them together and somehow linking them and expanding on that. My interpretation of the project was very much uh, trying to create something that is already there. So, in Piranesi's mind, you can imagine that all of this space was real. All of this was tangible. And my job is not to reinterpret it, but it is to show you what the rest of it is. Conceptually, it is infinite, right? You can zoom in as much as you want, it still remains, it still has the same pattern. I guess it, I kind of see it as a fractal, like you, you zoom in, or you zoom out, it's like always the same thing that kind of repeats itself. Whenever I looked at the images, I just thought that they were very um, like confusing. A lot of things were going on everywhere. And what I wanted to do was pretty much add to that confusion. So I thought to put a spiraling staircase downward, it pretty much, Kobo described it as a staircase from hell. <laughs> it's a staircase. And it's like, you would probably spend like 30 minutes going down it, but whatever, it's cool. Online, it's like small pictures in Google. So you don't see how big it is, but when it's in front of you and you, you have this little loop, you can just come in and see how, how crazy it is. And it's yeah. crazy detail. I was about to swear, but I just realized I couldn't swear. You can swear. <laughs> Coming in here, like, like everyone knows, like not the best drawer. Like Eli constantly reminds me every time I see him how my my drawing subpar to most of the people in the class. And like I, I accept it, I know it. Like I try to get better. Because yeah, it's it's a big piece of paper, and you need to feel that like 100 percent. So. You, you, you can't leave just a blank space, you need to do it like Piranesi did. Fear. A lot of fear, a lot of anxiety. Um, stress. From the moment we went to the library, I saw one, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna choose that one. I'm like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but you know what, I'll choose it and I'll freaking make it work because I was just fed up of overthinking things. Halfway through when I thought I was done, and then I met with Eli and Vedant, and they're like, yeah, this is completely wrong. Um, <laughs> you need to do all your shading. These lines are completely wrong. You need to redo everything. And I'm looking there and I'm like, okay, like I'm not gonna get this done. The way I speak to the TAs is very strategic. Like, let's say I have a good idea and I know I want to do it in mine, but I know if I say it at the beginning, they're gonna be like, okay, we'll change this, change this, because obviously it makes sense. You know, you want you want a, an idea to evolve, and that's perfectly fine. But let's say I really want to do it. I'll just start with a different idea, you know, tweak a little bit, whatever, whatever. And they're like, ah, I got this. And then, you know, you just do what you want to do in the end and it's good. Me as a 21st century kid, I, I have access to and I can study to bring back the, the mentality of, of an artist such as Pernasi.
I'm not studying Dark Souls because I like the monsters, because I like fighting, but because of the nonsensical layout of the land and how it feels to be in that space and how that space can make me feel like I'm going one way, but I'm really going another way. It's in a window a way, instead of a window yeah. instead of window. You could do this, ex th this work could be infinite. That's something that we have uh, as a new media is uh, film, video game. We have uh, uh, crazy Photoshop photography. So my job is really just being able to observe, listen, and look at the deep details that Piranesi has, and then just show you what the rest of it was for him.